Tutorial Tuesday with Crafting Cousins. Let's craft y'all! Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're mostly going to use Dollar Tree items. We have one of these wood signs, three of these small frames with the corrugated metal backs, burlap and lace ribbon, Waverly chalk paint in the color of ivory and ink, some twine, and this phrase that I cut out of iron-on vinyl with my Cricut. First, I'm going to paint my sign with my ivory chalk paint. I painted all sides and it took two coats to get a solid coverage. Now I'm going to paint my frames as well, so I removed the back. I will be hanging these frames to my sign, so I went ahead and popped off the stands. I like the distressed look of the frames, but the color just wasn't right for my sign, so I'm going to paint them ivory as well. I wanted to distress my sign and my frames, so I used my ink colored chalk paint and dry brushed some of it onto the edges of the sign and the frames. I tried to use a light hand, but I did get more on it than I wanted to, so I just used some more of my ivory chalk paint and softened it back up. Now I'm going to apply my wording to my sign. I love using this iron-on vinyl for these wood signs. It really looks like hand painting. I centered up my saying and then put my cover that I used for my heat press over the vinyl and ironed it down. You want to keep pressure on one place for about 10 seconds before you move the iron. I slipped a little when I changed positions, but fortunately I caught it before everything had set up well and I was able to gently pry up the letter that got off reposition it and iron it back down. Now I'm going to use some twine to make a hanger. I measure out a piece and use hot glue to attach each end. Once I get the twine down in the glue, I flood it with some more and let it dry. When I started to put my bags into my frames, I found out that they were not all the same size. I had a little trouble getting them to go back in. If you make one of these, I would suggest that you mark them as you take them out so you know which one goes with which. For some reason, there was two of them that I still couldn't get to go back into the frame, so I took my Zacto knife and trimmed it down and finally got it in there. It did take a little finagling, but now they're all back together. I'm going to use my burlap ribbon to attach my frames to my sign. I laid it out so I could see how far I wanted the frames to hang down and then cut my ribbon. I cut three pieces and flipped over my sign. I found the center of my sign and attached my first ribbon there with my hot glue. I laid my frames out so that I could tell where my other two ribbons needed to be attached and then glued them down to correspond with the center of the frame. I decided that I liked the frames to drop down four inches from the sign. I measured each one and then glued the ribbon down to the frames in two places. I'm normally too impatient to get the measurements perfectly, but I tried to make sure that I had these as close as possible. And there's our photo display. This is one of my favorite pieces. 
I love how easy it is to change out the pictures and I think it will fit in with any farmhouse decor. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring that bell so you'll be notified every time we upload new content. We upload five days a week offering a variety of DIYs, paper crafting, home decor hauls, and craft show information. I'm sure you will find something you will love with Crafting Cousins. This is going to be a Christmas in July project that was requested by one of our viewers and I'm excited to be doing it as this is one of my Christmas favorites. First, I'm going to take a pack of paint stirrer sticks and find seven that are approximately the same thickness. Using a combination of super glue fixative and hot glue, I'm going to attach my sticks together on the sides making a small palette. I kept picking up my palette in between to make sure the glue didn't stick to the paper on my table. It does ooze out on the top and the bottom, so I tried to clean it up as I went along. Now I'm going to use the large craft sticks from the Dollar Tree and glue them across the back of my palette to give it extra hold. Once my glue was dried, I used my little sanding block and ran over the top to try to get the dried glue that was left on there off. Then I used my ivory chalk paint and gave a good base coat to my palette. I'm going to be using acrylic paint on this and I found that it's easier for me when I use a base coat. I didn't have the color green that I wanted for this project, so I took the green that I had on hand and mixed it with some yellow to get the color I was looking for. We are making a Grinch, so I wanted him to have that sickly green color. It actually took three coats of my acrylic paint to get a really good coverage. I googled Grinch face and printed off one to use as a template. Then I took my carbon paper and traced my image onto my palette. I like using all different kinds of methods to letter my projects, but my carbon paper is definitely one of my favorites. Now I'm just using a small brush and my ink colored chalk paint and painting in his face. I like doing this kind of painting, but I do admit that it makes me nervous when I have to do it on camera. I love the Grinch. He is one of my favorite characters of all time. I think it's because I kind of identify with him. Who is your favorite character? Once I got the black part filled in, I went back with my yellow paint and filled in the eyes. I want to make my Grinch a Santa hat. I had some red fleece in my stash so I laid my palette on top of it and figured out how far I wanted the hat to go down on the palette. Then I just rough sketched a hat onto my fleece and cut it out. Then I used my hot glue to attach the front of the hat to the back. For the white fur part of my hat, I'm going to use this duster mop pad that I got from the Dollar Tree. It has channels in between the fluff, so I just cut along one of them and it gave me the perfect furry trimming for my hat. When my glue is completely dried, I turn my hat inside out and put it on my palette. Once I had it in the right position, I just glued it down with my hot glue. 
Then I attached my furry trim to my hat and trimmed off the ends. I added the glue to the hat and the palette to make sure that it had a good stabilization. For the ball on the end of my hat, I took two cotton balls and pulled them to fluff them out. Then I glued one to the front of the hat and one to the back. This gave me a pom-pom look. I found this headband in the kids toy section at the Dollar Tree and knew it was perfect for my Grinch's hair. I took the fur off the headband and cut it in half. Then I just trimmed the sides down until I liked how it looked and attached it with my hot glue. Now I'm going to turn the top of the hat down and glue it in place. I decided to use one of the small pieces that I trimmed off the hair and I made him a goatee. I want to be able to hang my Grinch palette up. So I took some of my twine and tied a loop with a knot in the end, glued it to the back of my palette with my hot glue and let it dry. And there's Mr. Grinch. I love him so much. I can't wait to make him a part of my Christmas decorations. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope that you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all. We would love to have you tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Tutorial Tuesdays, either Hump Day Hauls or Wednesdays, Trash to Treasure Thursdays, and finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturdays. See you tomorrow!